I'm here right now with Johnny Three Tears from The Hollywood Undead. Thank you so much for being on the show. How are you today? I'm chilling, bro. Take awesome, man. Easy. So you are on tour right now, which is incredible. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first things first, you guys dropped a new record this year, Hotel California. Yep. So I listened to the record. Of course, I've been a fan of you guys for a long time. Saw you back, I think it was like 2009 at Bamboozle in New Jersey. Oh, really? Um, I think it was like you guys, and then right after was The Used. Yeah, it was um, with The Used. I remember that. Like, yep. It was yesterday. Yeah, and then it like poured all day after that. So. Yeah, it was it was gnarly. I remember. I <laughs> yeah. remember that we had to go back to like New York after because that's where our label was. Yeah, I remember it. That was that was a wild day, man. That was a wild night in general. That was fun though. Yeah. So whatever happened to Bamboozle? Uh, they went back to calling it Skate and Surf for a little while, and then I think uh the guy who ran it just wanted to do something a little different. But yeah, that was a cool festival. Yeah, I had fun, man. Okay, well that makes sense. So speaking of music, the new record, you know, throughout the years, you guys have done everything from everywhere I go to bullet to chaos on this new record, totally different sounds, different topics. You as a writer, where does your passion most lie? Is it more like the party songs, the serious songs? Like, no, what? no, it's definitely the serious stuff. That's usually my responsibility. That's where like I, that's the stuff I like to, to write. Um, me and Charlie have an ongoing feud of what the band should be um we're gonna box later to see who wins so i'll let you know what it's kind of funny you mentioned that because when i was talking to him he said when you guys first you know started writing a lot of those records there was physical fights about what songs got on who got what parts things like that well there's i mean you're, you're you, when you're doing something uh, you care about you know it's hard being in a band's hard it's like a you know it's a democracy so uh, you have to be willing to give up on things you, you care about in order to make someone else happy and vice versa. It's like a, a sham marriage, bro. Yeah. And, and uh, with no prenup, bro, you're fucked. <laughs> I mean, with that many songwriters and singers, too, it's not just like a band with one lead singer and a couple of backing members. You all rap and do everything. Yeah, everybody does everything. So, I mean, that's never been a real issue as far as that goes. But I think you know, you, you conceptually like what we want to do as a band in general, you know, those are the things, the topics that we have, but mm. I mean, it's normal and everybody wants to, um, to move it. You, you never want to stay stagnant. So which direction do you want to move in? But it always works out and everybody's usually pretty stoked on everything. So, um, but you know, it's a, if, if we didn't, um, oh, excuse me. Uh, if we didn't care, then, uh, the music would start to suck. So, you know, it shows that everybody's still in the fight and we, yeah. everybody, you know, cares about the project. So you're always going to have, I've heard way worse stories from other bands about them going at it than ours. So like the Eagles, Metallica, all of them have stories. Dude, every band, every yeah. band has, you know, those, those moments where it's like F you, F you, or yeah. cause you know, it, it really is very similar to marriage. Not only do you have to write together, put out records together, you have to tour together in a bus and sleep next to each other um you know it's a lot yeah and so when i saw you guys and i'm you know i know you guys still do this you switch around a lot on stage is it nice getting a break you know from being maybe the main focus and switching on to an instrument something like that kind of chilling oh dude i love i love that i don't care the break thing and that i don't really think of it that because you know it never really stops but i love the dynamic of the character driven music where it's a different take all mm -hmm. the time. You know what I mean? So I you're think, kind of going in yeah. and out and it, it, it's, it's more effective storytelling to me is the way I've always looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, and if someone has, not I, I, I love doing the bass or playing whatever in doing that. It's just a different feeling than doing something else. So it's, it's cool. Cause you got to do everything, but yeah, no, I mean, um, I like the dynamic in the theatrical aspect of like, you know, switching and mm -hmm. you got to do different things. It's cool. I think a lot of people, because I know when I first saw you guys and you started switching around, I had no idea that's what was going to happen. And I was there with my brother and I was like, did they just switch, you know, parts on stage? So I think people who are seeing you for the first time are going to have that same reaction. Like, oh, my God, these guys don't just, you know, sing and rap. They're actually up there playing the songs. They're switching around, multi-talented musicians, which, you know, is something you don't really get from a lot of bands. Most bands do not switch parts. 
Yeah, no, that was one thing I always loved about the Beastie Boys, not only their songwriting capability, but all those guys played drums, bass, guitar. So they would, you know, swap out if they weren't doing vocals and stuff. And I always found that pretty inspiring just because <clears throat> it adds a whole nother element to the show. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're there to entertain people and um, bring that value to people. So we're very conscientious of like making sure, you know, especially nowadays, a lot of people are on hard times. If they're going to spend 50 bucks to come see us, we're going to make sure they walk away happy. That's really your job at that point. So we take that seriously. Yeah. And I, when I was looking up some different things, you know, about you and the band, I saw that Beastie Boys, Nine Inch Nails are bands that like you would love to tour with because they're, they're huge inspirations, things like that. But I also found that you are a big Neil Young fan. I love Neil Young, man. Neil Young, CCR, things like that, which, you know, it's, it's cool to see because you don't play anything like that. Um, no, you, dude, you know, what's funny is I do my own music. It's called, uh, I'm not trying to name drop, but it's called George Reagan, the Dead Son. And it's all like folk-based guitar stuff. Nice. That's what I, that's what I actually listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in that, and I listen to hip hop and this is, you know, all of them, that's always kind of been that hip hop influence, but yeah, John Fogarty is my favorite songwriter, him and like Tom Petty and, nice. um, some of those dudes, I love Jeff Buckley and stuff, but if, you know, if that's, if I'm going to listen to music that I want to hear, that's typically what I'll listen yeah. to. It's either that or like rap, you know, it depends nice. what kind of mood I'm in. Are you a Bruce Springsteen fan? I like a lot of early Bruce Springsteen. Um, I think he's great at what he does, but, um, it's not there. There's things he does that I really like, but I wouldn't say yeah. that I'm, you know, it, I, mean, I, I really like introspective music mm -hmm. and I suppose depressive and it would be a good word. Um, and Springsteen's more, you know, he's an upbeat dude. And yeah. That's great. But that's usually not what I am looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, I like music that makes me want to blow my head off, you know, <laughs> that is not Bruce. Just Coming from New Jersey, though, that that's our singer songwriter guy. He's like the idol of everybody. For no, no, and dude, he's awesome. To be doing what he's doing at, at the, that level for so long is, yeah. is amazing, and he's a great songwriter. It's you know, music. It's funny because music is really subjective. Like it's like picking your favorite color. You know, you don't choose it. You just respond to a color or yeah. something tastes good to you or bad to you. You don't. It's not a predisposition. So, you know, when I hear music, I either respond to it or don't that doesn't mean that doesn't mean what i don't respond to is bad it just means yeah. it's not and i've always kind of liked the more uh i don't know downer stuff that's always kind of what i've responded to emotionally yeah um so you know spring seems great but it's too happy for me usually <laughs> so what you're doing then kind of reminds me of i know i don't know if he's still doing it anymore but john five when he left marilyn manson he did like a whole bluegrass kind of record which was yeah hugely surprising but then when you listen to it from an artistic standpoint you can hear where different things pull from you know metal has a lot of pull from that kind of thing whether it's the storytelling or the writing and you know rap is all storytelling as well which is but you said folks so i think a lot of people who are watching this might not realize that correlation and well it's, dude, it, it's all storytelling with a melody and music behind it um so i mean to me, no matter how high quality, you know, someone's production is or how capable they are at certain things, if you're, there's no story behind any of it, it's all meaningless anyway. That's what Tom Petty said. All you need is three chords and the truth. And I believe that. And I think you know, there's music that I feel partly probably because the guy's telling the truth. There's a lot of people just bullshitting and just yeah. writing stuff for the sake of writing it or you know, that really haven't gone through maybe enough in their lives to where there's substantive material so that's you know and i usually could tell you know like if i hear somebody telling the truth or i usually you'll you'll, you'll get a feeling goosebumps yeah. or like something in your stomach and that's usually what i respond to first if that's not there all the other stuff layered on top of it doesn't matter to me personally yeah. so you know there's a lot of bands that sound amazing but i just don't get the the raw feeling of it yeah and you know you might have a similar opinion than I are a different one than I do, but I think a lot of bands and just artists in general feel a lot of pressure from all the controversy now that they have to write something about a certain thing. And it might not be what they connect with, but you know, if someone's pushing you like, Hey, you need to write a song like this, sometimes listen to them. And that can put across that fake feeling. Yeah. I mean, dude, if you're writing street shit and you didn't do street shit, you're going to get called out for it. And you know, 
that's just they don't rap about selling blow if you didn't sell blow or whatever, whatever the case may be. There's plenty of other things to talk about. Um, and, you know, in like the metal scene, it, there's a lot of aggression, you know, that's, and, you know, I've met a lot of guys who are in the metal world that sit around playing Call of Duty all day. They're not metal dudes. They're just playing metal music. So it's like, you know, there's a difference in those things. I'm not hating on anybody, but, you know, there's enough going on in life to just talk about life. You don't have to make stories up, I guess. Mm -hmm. Kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, because I, I heard an interview or someone said something to Metallica at one point, you know, you write these songs about being depressed in these hard places and hard times and things like that. But as you rise, obviously, you know, you're not poor on the streets anymore. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you find yourself still trying to connect with people through like the older feelings you've had or just moving past that and acknowledging who you are now? No, absolutely. You move past, I mean, dude, uh, existential questions don't cease because you get a paycheck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you're still haunted by the same mortality everybody else has to face and the same issues that everybody has to face. And, um, of course, you know, from a financial standpoint, those things can obviously help. It sucks being poor. And I know, um, you know, not having enough food to eat or, you know, these things create massive issues for people. But, uh, as you move past those things, that doesn't mean that life, no, it doesn't mean you can't get, you know, fall in love and have your heart broken. It doesn't mean you're not going to lose people and eventually you'll be lost to other people. So usually when I write, it's from a, like, I like to write from a philosophical standpoint about, you know, existence itself. And I love writing. I love, yeah, I take a lot of interest in other people and hearing their stories. And sometimes those things will inspire other people's experience can inspire music as well. So, um, I try and just keep an open mind, but yeah, you know, as people move up, you know, especially a band like Metallica, obviously they got a ton of money, but they still have to face all the existential problems and questions that the rest of us do. They can just do with more money, but yeah, I've been rich and I've been poor and I can assure you having money doesn't solve all your problems by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. I actually miss it sometimes. Not that I'm rich or something, but you know, we, when we grew up, we grew up with very little and, we subsidized Hollywood Ed by trapping, by growing weed in LA. And, you know, this is when it was still illegal. Um, and, you know, you're scraping by and you're, you, you, you get popped, you're going to do a lot of time and stuff like that, but you had to do it to survive. But the thing I miss about it is the simplicity. It was that or nothing. Cause that's all you have. And mm -hmm. I think as you move forward in life and you're given more choices, it causes more confusion because you don't necessarily have to do everything to survive that you might've before. And that's one thing I do miss is it was, it was that or nothing. And that yeah. at least takes the choice away, you know, yeah. and simplicity there, there's a beauty to it. So, you know, there's great things about being successful and there's shitty things about being successful. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you know, you wear a lot of hats in the band and music and writing and performing. You guys obviously also wear masks and they change, you know, whether it's record to record, just throughout time, which is your favorite mask? For me personally, I like the blue one with the butterflies and the three. Notes no, from the underground. Yeah. It was from our third album. That's my favorite. It lit up. It was fucking. So like we'd black out the stage and all you could see was the lights and stuff. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was awesome. Um, we haven't done anything with masks in a while just because, you know, you run out. It's a, you run out of stuff to do. We didn't want to do it just to do it. When we started it, we wanted to have like an aspect of creativity that you don't necessarily have availability to in a normal band setting you know dudes standing around looking tough or whatever it's like so we love that, that facet um but that was definitely my favorite out of that time period was the third one that lit up and i still have mine too sometimes i wear it to bed with my wife just to spook her out <laughs> actually great. i make her wear it so that way i feel like i'm making love to myself <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> sorry that was that was a little personal oh no it's good people love okay. personal um Another thing I, you know, I found out about you actually, you know, I found a bunch. I like to dive into a lot of research and really get to know the bands. But because I knew it was with you specifically, I wanted to find out some things that you would touch on personally. You produced a movie alongside another Sounds of the Underground artist, Tony from Mest. What got you into that? Well, my buddy Jeff, he wrote a movie. Um... Yeah, it was a comedy, slapstick comedy. And he's like, hey, do you want to be involved? And I was like, fuck no. And then the whole idea 
he kept pitching and then I, he wanted me to do a couple parts in it. And after a while I started warming up to the idea just because I, you know, it'd be fun to do something new really. And, you know, we did like premieres and all this goofy shit, but, um, I really just did it to have fun with it. And I always liked the idea of doing acting. Not, I'm not saying I'm any good at it, but I like the idea of it. And uh, so I did like two parts in it and helped produce it and stuff. But it was, it was mainly, you know, we were just trying to have some fun and do something different. And my buddy, he's a real creative guy, a real talented dude. So I knew it was in good hands. So I said, yeah, what the hell, let's do it. And it was, you know, new experience. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's called Highway to Have a Suit. Don't yeah. blame me if you don't like it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Um, and also another completely different thing. You went to Yale <laughs> or is that just like, I saw it on your Instagram. And I was like, it says alma mater, but I'm not sure. That no, it's into this, story I, I, graduated, I, I got my GED in jail. That's how I graduated high school. Um, I did not go to fucking Yale. Um, I had a Yale sweater a long time ago. Cause we played, what's the name of that fucking town? There's this place called froggies or some shit wherever the hell it was. And I bought a sweater because it was cold as fuck. And then someone said, did you go to Yale? And I said, yeah, thinking it would be obvious. I did not go to yeah. Yale. Um, but I guess, and then so like, you know, the internet's the internet. Um, no, I didn't go to Yale. In fact, I got my GED at Challenger camp in Antelope Valley, California when I was locked up. And that was the last time I ever went to school. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I, you know, I read it and I was like, this doesn't seem right. I got to ask him about mm. it. And I, I think I saw a picture on your Instagram where you, you posted like, Oh, here's my alma mater giving a speech. Oh, yeah, um, no, it, 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 I was running with the joke and I really was kind of shocked by how many people thought that was serious. A we've been in a band where I would have had to been in going to yell while we were in the band. Yeah. That's what I, you figured. know, I, and, and, uh, I'm like a street urchin. I can't afford Yale, nor if I could afford Yale, would I ever waste money on an American college? I'm not stupid. Yeah. You know, you can get us just a, go get a go to the library, check out some books and you'll be fine. Yeah. Most experiences learned on the job, which I'm sure you have noticed being in a band. Well, yeah. And you know, not only that, I mean, now I don't know, like I, we would just, we just had a day off outside of ASU, Arizona state university. I it did. Unfortunately, I just don't see the value there, especially I think the college system's kind of broken. You know, they lend all this money out. These people get out. They realize the hard way they're not going to earn a lot of money and they owe a bunch of fucking two hundred thousand dollars and they are in student debt. I know guys who are thirty five still owe money from when they went to yeah. college. It's like I just don't see the value. You can go to a library and learn or go to a trade school or just learn how to do something working at uh, on the job site. I mean, unless you're going to be like a lawyer or a doctor or some specialist where you have to, um, you know, I think most kids just go to party anyway. Yeah, probably. And they probably no, listen, no, to, your, dude, they probably listen to your first record the whole yeah, time. No, if, that, if that's the case, uh, that I could understand. But um, yeah, no, no, I didn't go to Yale. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> um, I'm just going to finish out with one more thing because I know a lot of bands have like a series of pranks or something they do on tour. Do you guys have something you always like mess around with or kind of bring back? Oh yeah. All kinds of fucked up shit. I mean, dude, you got to pass the time. Um, we love, uh, you know, penis stuff like any other adult group of males. And whenever we get new crew guys, we, I don't even know. Well, whatever we like to pull out. <laughs> it's usually me. You pull out your penis and you take a knife and you turn it upside down they don't know this and you put it on the counter and cut into it, but with the dull side down and they, and I always say, I'm tired of this thing causing me so much trouble. And you watch the reaction from there. And from what you see right off the bat, cause you see a knife indenting into a penis, you think so really chopping their dick off. <laughs> and so that's usually the first thing that people see when they join up. Um, and that's the most intense. Yeah, oh no, it's not a joke, dude. We're not trying to have fucking fun out here. We want to scare the shit out of people. So that's one we do. Um, we don't do it as much anymore. You know, you get you got to worry a little more about the penis stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't know, want to get harassment charges. Like, dude, I was just chopping off my dick. I don't see the big deal nowadays. I don't know if that flies. Yeah. We get a lot of penis stuff. Um, you know, anything we can think of to disrupt the monotony. And yeah. it's usually pretty fucking gross. Yeah, I mean, b having done the whole touring scene myself, it seems like most bands have like some sort of weird body related, sexual related joke that kind of always runs with the band or their crew. Well, dude, you got a bunch of dudes 
in a small space, there's only one way that's going to go. You know yeah. what I mean? There, there's no denying it because you get that down to like your real human nature. Yeah. There's no rules around to impress or anything. So you really quickly see how society can devolve on tour. Mm. Like, damn, we'd be cavemen if there wasn't women around to impress. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Dude, I'd start wearing sweats. I wouldn't shave. I wouldn't care at all. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, eh, you know, I don't want my wife to see me like that. Yeah. If women disappeared. I, we'd be swinging from trees naked and doing all kinds of weird shit within a month. Yeah. And I'm sure it changes, you know, and you have three kids now, I believe you had mm-hmm. a recent birth. All daughters too. So now I have to keep this fucking charade up for the rest of my <laughs> life. I'm actually a man. Do you, or do you have any concerns of when they get older, kind of looking back on seeing your earlier career or is it just like a, Hey, this was me. And you know, I've grown up a little bit. No, I haven't grown up at all. I'm worse. <laughs> if any, I haven't gotten grown up. Dude, it's a bummer. Because now, like, back then, oh, he's young. It makes sense. Now they're just like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? And I don't make any pretense that that's going to change now. All right. All right, bro. This is the best of me. This is, hey, I mean, this is the best of you. You're doing pretty well. I mean, you're no, on no, a massive you, tour right now. It, you, yeah, no, it, it's, it's all, dude, you know, people take life too fucking seriously. That's mm-hmm. really the thing. And uh, yeah, I told my, you know, when my kids are older, you know, they're having fun. We're in a band, you know, I don't have any issue with that. In fact, social norms typically are redundant anyway. You know, I, I just don't get it. So like anybody else, I want to go through life and have a good time. I don't want to hurt anybody or anything like that. But within reason, people should enjoy their life. It's the mm-hmm. only one they get. So, you know, we like to have fun and, you know, um, there's plenty of things to be serious about. Life can be quite tragic, but I'm certainly not going to add more uh, monotony and stuff to it than ha- there already is. Yeah. You know, people should, people should try and have a good time and enjoy their life because it's, it's hard to do. There's always going to be curveballs. So I certainly don't uh, want to project anything different than, you know, yeah. you deal with those things, but touring life, anything you do should always be fun. And if it isn't, you should do something else. I think that is the perfect spot to stop this interview. Thank you so much for, for being on the show. And, you know, I look forward to hopefully being able to, ah, <laughs> I look forward to being able to catch one of the upcoming shows that you guys have, you know, yeah, we'll know be back of, in your area, dude, if you're out, you're out in Jersey. So I live in California now. Oh, you do. We yeah. just played Irvine. A week I know. Ago. Where are you at in Cali? Uh, I'm right in Santa Clarita outside LA. Oh, I know that dude. I used to go to Knott's or it was a magic mountain out there. Magic, magic mountain. mountain. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll be back, dude. Um, yeah, I'd love to meet you, man. Uh, we'll, we'll be back soon though. I know we, I pretty sure early next year we'll be back. Awesome. I'll be sure to keep up to date with that. And yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure, brother. Take care. Okay. Cool, man. You have a good one. All right, dude. Hey, try that dick chopping trick for your buddy. <laughs> I'll be sure to do that. Okay. Let me Thanks know. For the tip, literally. Yeah. Later. <laughs>